Hey, well, hello, hello, hello. You are joining the No Brainers Empowering Possibilities Show. Dialogues of encouragement with fresh perspectives, invitations to ahas, a little bit of science, and a dash of behavioral psychology, but a whole lot of creative fun. So if leveling up is on your radar, my friend, you are at the right show. I'm your host, Roseanne Marsh. I'm the author of the Teen and the Parent Empowering Curriculum, Level Up. And this is episode number seven, Messages All Around Us. Is it serendipity or is it chance? Now, if you're joining us today, this is one of those shows that is worth your curiosity. Would you look at life differently if you thought that the universe was sending you constant messages of encouragement of love? How would your life be different if you began to see around you those serendipitous signs that gave you the out and out feeling that happenstance things in your life were being orchestrated for you? Would that not change the way you started viewing things? Well, here's your invitation to at least venture into that land of the curious and walk into the awe-inspiring world of messages all around us. In this show, it's about inviting you to listen with curiosity and then do the next step if you desire. And that's start experiencing this for yourself. I'll walk you through some fun, basic observations of what may be happening with, for you and a couple of tools to let you, the magic start blessing your life too. But as you hear the examples, you may already start making some connections with some things that have brought a smile upon your face that you hadn't really connected it to being a message for you. But there are things out there cheerleading you and hopefully this will make you curious enough to start paying attention. So what are we talking about? Well, we're walking into the world of symbolism, but one meant for your eyes and your ears. So what is a symbol? A symbol is the idea that things represent other things. They can take on multiple meanings. You know, what we mean by that is we can look at something and see it as this, but symbolically it could mean something different. And as we analyze life and realize that so many things out there are symbolic, it opens up an understanding that honestly, makes you go to bed at night and go, this is the coolest journey ever. So I hope as I share some of these fun little things that have happened to me that have opened up my eyes to the world of messages around me, you'll have uh, some epiphanies and some experiences that will bring some richness to you. You know, it all started over eight years ago when I purchased this book on the internet. And I remembered it came it I ordered it and it arrived and I remember opening it up going oh that's right I was really excited about reading this book and then I put it off to the side on a pile of other books that I had that I was like oh I can't wait to get to these books and then kind of forgot about it three weeks later another package arrived and I opened up the package and out of it came this book and I was like what Wait, I feel like I'm having a deja vu moment here. Uh, I think I already own this book. And then I thought, oh, well, I do, I really want to read that book. So I put it aside. Three weeks later, another package comes. And this time I'm like, wait, did I accidentally order three of these? So I went to my online order and double checked and I had only ordered one. But here it was, three books, three weeks apart, had arrived on my doorstep. And I was like, okay, what in the world? Tell me what the number three means. And it means divine involvement, backing or influence. And I was like, okay, okay, I've got to read this book. So coincidence, Albert Einstein said, is God's way of remaining anonymous. Was that a coincidence that this, I got three books, three weeks apart, or was there a message being sent to me? 
symbolically these things were being given to me so that my eyes could see and that my ears could hear in a very different way. So how many of you believe in coincidences? How many believe that things happen for a reason? And how many of you had experience where you knew that was divinely orchestrated an event or a happening? Well, I started on this journey over eight years ago when coincidences were popping up right and left and things that I could not ignore. I mean, some of them were like head scratchers. There's moments of understanding and complete awe and then times of just <laughs> out now belly laughs when I knew that the universe the heavens were so aware of me and knew I needed some level levity. So I was not alone on this journey. I knew then. And when things caught my attention, there was generally purpose and guidance in it. So what does serendipity mean? Where did that word even come from? It actually was a something coined by Horace Walpole back in 1792 in a letter to Horace Mann, he said he uh, formed it from a Persian fairy tale, the three princes of Serendip. And in this, these princes would go around and they would find things that they were not in quest of, that by accident, they would discover these wisdoms, these Sadducees. And so they called them, the name was Serendip, an old name of Ceylon. And then from that, um, we came up with the word serendipity. Serendipity, the occurrence and development of events by chance in a happy and beneficial way. A fortunate stroke of serendipity. So before we start, I want to I want to say, so how do you recognize if there's a message out there and how does it come to you? And we're going to talk a lot about a bunch of different ways that messages come to you and not all of them. In fact, in next week's show, I have some real tangible hands-on of, of a kind of a level two learning that I came about with a couple of things. But first of all, how do you recognize a message? Well, it's something that gets your attention or it's something that repeatedly happens in your life. And so you start paying attention to it or there's something that parallels or seems to parallel something that's going on in your life. Or a message means it's something that's recognizable to you. Or it's something that strikes you and just makes you smile. And you've paid attention to it. It could also be strong emotional reaction that you have to something. That you go, okay, I'm going to pay attention here. It could be a reoccurring dream that you have. Or it could be something that wakes you up in the middle of the night and you're thinking about it. But it's usually something that makes you say, this is by far the coolest journey ever to start realizing that things are multi-layered and have different messages for us. What these messages or signs don't do, they don't predict the future. What predicts our future? Well, our actions and our decisions do. We are the predictor of our future. It's in, in our hands, in our mind, in our thoughts of how we proceed into life. And they don't necessarily provide answers, but they invite us to be curious. They invite us to investigate, but ultimately it's up to us to make decisions. So I want to clarify, that this is not soothsaying. These are messages that are there for our invitation for our curiosity. So what good are they? They're lessons, invitations, possible warnings to consider, affirmations, confirmations, reminders, nudges. They might be a piece of the puzzle that leads to the next piece. They may teach us traits or values. They point us in an upward direction. They invite us to a higher consciousness. And sometimes these messages just provide a good laugh. When we, we know we're not alone, we know that the universe, the heavens are whispering in our ear, they're paying attention to us. And if we pay attention, we'll see that they are actually communicating back to us. So what are not one of the ways that yet they can communicate to us? Well, one would be through numbers. For example, how many of you ever see 1111 a lot? That seems to be one that I see quite a bit. In fact, 
I saw on November 11th at 11, 11, I caught it and screenshot that number. It's, it's interesting how my mind always goes to 11, 11. Are you curious to know what 11, 11 means? In fact, on 9, 11 at 11, 11, I got a screenshot of that. It said it's about intuition, insight, and enlightenment, awakening you on the right path. So numbers, for those of you who are into numerology, they mean a lot of significant things. So maybe you see 444 a lot. The number 444 can mean the angels are surrounding you now, reassuring you with their love and help. Don't worry because the angel's help is nearby. Or do you see 555? You know, buckle up your seatbelts and major life changes about, about you. This change should not be viewed as being positive or negative since any change is but a natural part of life's flow. So 888, do you see, do you see zeros? There's so many different messages that come across in numbers. And maybe you see a combination of numbers. Maybe you see one, two, one, or you always seen 542. Whatever your series of numbers is, Look up on the internet. What does the five mean? What does the four mean? What does the two mean? And look at the, what that combination could mean. You could also say, well, and I do a lot of internet surfing where I just say, what is the spiritual significance of? And then it'll come up. So like 542, if that's your number, what is the spiritual significance of 542? And it can tell you that. There are messages in these guys, I swear. You're going to have so much fun now that you're going, wait, I can look this up. There are others that understand the significance of numerology. One of the religious leaders of our area on November 20th of 2020 gave a speech at 1111 for 11 minutes. And what was his message? His message was about gratitude. So numbers is another way. Another way is birds and feathers. Have you ever had feathers that continue to show up? I have a friend that whenever something's significant or needs to know where to go, there seems to be a feather that shows up in her path. How many of you had birds fly nearby or cross in front of you or soar around you or sing to you? Those lovely fowls have a message for us. I have a falcon that periodically will follow me. I had wild turkey the other day, 15 of them in my backyard. And the leader, or supposed leader, came up and to the window as if to tell me a message and then turned around. And as you look at the significance of these animals, what is the, what is the bird analogy? So I looked up the spiritual significance of wild turkeys. And it's all about grounding and being a part of Mother Earth. And there are some other things that are a part of it. So that particular day, as I saw them right away, I took a moment to look it up to find out what the significance was. Sometimes I'll be driving down the street and there'll be certain birds that will cross. I was in the middle of a project and had taken far too long to get it done. And all of a sudden, a bunch of quail uh, went in front of my car. So I stopped right then and looked up the, uh, and looked up the message for Quell. And it said something about don't delay those things that are going to influence your future, uh, etc. Anyway, something to that point. But anyway, I got the point was, whoa, okay, get back on task. And here are these little birds that come right in front of me. Years ago, I was in a ravine walking my dogs and there were six ravens or crows that were cawing and squawking quite loud. And off the cuff, I said, oh, of course you guys are going to be here to ruin my walk. And all of a sudden they took flight and started circling me as if I were their prey. And I thought it was in an Alfred Hitchcock movie for sure. They started diving me and I thought for a second, Maybe they're just feeding on insects that I don't see. So I walked brisker, deeper down into the ravine, but no, they followed me. 
And finally, I was just like praying for help, you know, uh, you know f- trying to figure out a way to save myself from these these crows. And when I got home, a friend of mine uh, laughed and she said, don't you know the significance of the crow? Look it up. So again, I looked it up and it says it's about mystery and magic, but a reminder not to judge something for its appearance and not to judge other cultures, religions, beliefs, etc. So at that point in my life, I mean, I had judged these crows and they're, they're actually now my friends. I, I love them. They're all over uh, around my home. But where in my life, I thought, was I showing any prejudice? And that was such a beautiful reminder that day. Another way that we might have reminders is through insects. I was taking my dogs for a walk and I didn't have any music in my ears. And all of a sudden I heard this humming like I've never heard before. And it was hundreds of dragonflies. I was mesmerized and in awe of them. I've seen dragonflies before, but not hundreds and literally so close that I could reach out and touch them. But I just sat and marveled at how they could fly so effortlessly. And as I looked up the dragonfly, the dragonfly symbolizes change, transformation, adaptability, and self-realization. The change that is often referred to has its source in the mental and emotional maturity and understanding the deeper meaning of life. Now, I have to say during that time, I was doing a lot of healing, mental and emotional healing. So these messages were just so appropriate to me at that time in my life. So think about those things that you're experiencing and what comes to you. Another way that messages has come to us is people. We have um, different people or a theme that's happening. And I had watched that movie, Darling movie, called The Marigold, Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. And it's about this amazing hotel in, in um, India. And I had watched the, the first one and I was mesmerized with it. And I wanted to watch the next one, but I couldn't find it anywhere. It wasn't listed anywhere, but I was just upset. I was like, why can't I find this? The next day I was helping to do some pedigree genealogy for an organization I was involved with. And they gave me five women's name to work on. And they were all from India. First time I'd ever worked on anyone from India. Then a couple of days later, I met with um, an attorney from Boston who was trying to bring to market a serum for autistic children. And I was working with her on trying to see what our family involvement needed or should be. And uh, she was talking about energy work and things. And I said, so how, how did you get involved with energy work? And she said, well, you learn about energy everywhere when you grow up in India. I went, oh, she's from India. And then two days later, I called for a locksmith and he came and he was from India. And then I ran into my neighbor a couple days later and they were just getting ready to go on their trip. And they were going on a trip to, yeah, India. And then I went to the bank and was signing with a pen. And I love it when you get a pen that really writes well. And I was looking on it and it was made in India. So (laughs) what should I have been asking myself at this point? Like what's with India? And of course I did some deep diving into what is the significance of India uh, in my life? And I I received some, some answers in my pondering, but interesting how it was through that flood of one after another that the universe was like, hey, pay attention to this. So I grew up with these books. Anyone else? I was always interested in their ability to have like this deductive reasoning. And I I love to read and see if I could pick out the foreshadowing that was written in the storyline. So if if I could be anything in this world, I would love to be another Nancy Drew. And sometimes that's what we become when we look at these different serendipitous things or these different things that happen, these messages that come to us, we get a chance now to say, okay, Nancy Drew or or Hardy Boys or whatever it was that you grew up with, what is the significance of this? What am I to learn? 
when my ex-husband and I and multiple partners were starting up an MLL company, we needed to get the acai berry out of the Amazon um, for an antioxidant drink that we were developing. And to do that, we needed the permission of the Brazilian government. So one of the partners flew to Brazil and half, uh, halfway there, he turned to the gentleman sitting next to him to uh, just have some conversation only to find out that that was the minister of the agriculture for the country of Brazil that he was flying with. So needless to say, we got the acai serendipity by chance. I don't think so. Good things orchestrated. Another thing was like, oh, how out of a movie? You could even learn things in a movie. I love the movie Coco. Is about the day of the dead and the necessity to have a picture of the dead person there so that they could be more a part of your life. Well, when my mother went to pass away, she was so insistent that I have a picture of her always there. And I, I, um, I was like, sure, mom, no worry. The movie hadn't come out yet, Coco. And when it came out and I was watching that, I was like, oh my gosh. Maybe that's why she was so insistent that I have a picture of her. And yes, she leaves me pennies all the time. You'd think that I would just um, daily just say, hey, I need your help because angels on the other side, anyway, it's my belief that they will help us, but they need our permission to do so. But just so amazing that what she told me was a request of hers was then reflected in a movie. And it verified for me that I need to make sure I have a picture of her. And yes, she's right here to the side of us as we, as we speak. Now, another way it comes to you would be animals or mammals or reptiles. I uh, had some friends come visit me and they were asking me, so what are you doing for fun? I see that you're working all the time, but what are you doing for fun? And I had to admit that it was kind of challenging for me to just drop things and run, it almost felt better to stay behind and get the work caught up. But I knew I needed to learn how to play. And I was coming home one night along the main road that I drive. And I thought it was a German shepherd in front of me. And it was just standing in the middle of the road, just staring. And I stopped with my headlights there and it looked at me and I realized, realized that's a coyote. That's not a German shepherd, that's a coyote. So I quickly looked it up. So I quickly looked it up and it's a trickster, a jokester, laugh at yourself. Don't take life so seriously, find joy. And remember it's fun to play. Now, again, there's lots of resources on the internet. There's lots of books that you can have. I have, you know, like some animal speak books, et cetera. But it's easy to just flip on your phone and ask for the, specific, the spiritual significance of and you, you'll have different resources and intuitively just kind of figure out which one that you're going to pick. Sometimes they mean something different at a different time. This last really poignant one happened on a spring break where I went with a friend to St. George, Utah. And our trip was called No More Fear. We were going to leave behind the things that we fear. And I had identified, of course, my fear was snakes. And her fear was, of course, heights. So we, this is a trip where we we're not only going to let things, of, let go of things that didn't serve us, but it was no more fear that we were going to let go of fear of things. And we had already hiked and conquered Angel's Landing in Zion's. What a thrill. I mean, I already had over five people die falling off the side of that. So that was a thrill. But we decided to lay out at a pool and get some color. And as we laid in the sun, before we went to the pool, I was reading an astrological chart that I had had done. And it said that today, that day, I was entering into the house of rebirth, that I was leaving behind things that no longer served me, and which really floored me because that was the focus of our trip. And as we laid by the pool, I noticed that I had my black flip-flops right there in the sun. And I thought, oh, these are going to be really hot when I go to put them back on. So I placed them under the chair so they wouldn't be so hot. 
then soon after I saw another family I knew. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to grab my flip flops and go over and talk to them. But as I reached under my chair to grab my pair of flip flops, this is what I saw looped into my flip flops. Oh my gosh. I jumped up and explained, oh my gosh, there's a coral snake in my flip flops. Okay. I would normally scream and run away, but um, my friend jumped up and she said, wow, it left you something. Look at this. Intertwined in my flip-flops was a snake skin. Okay, all you Nancy Drews deduct that message. So I looked up shedding snake skin signifies death and rebirth, the shedding of the old and the rebirth of the new. Of the new. Interesting that this message was conveyed to me on that same day that I had just read that on a trip that we had labeled our no more fear and had been delivered to me through the one thing that I was fearful of. Another time I walked my son to the top of the driveway and it had been a hard year, teenage years, um, it'd been tough. Usually he was mad slamming doors and wouldn't talk, but as we walked to the top of the driveway, as he was waiting for a ride, out of the corner of my eye, I saw three little flowers poking out of the snow. And so we walked over and we started looking at them. They were day lilies. And we noticed that they were in, in threes, layers of threes. And so we both sat down there with our faces next to it, admiring these flowers. Then he took off. And so I, um, as I walked back, I felt like I needed to look up the significance of the day lily and it's what chinese mothers wear it's a spiritual reminder of the filial love for their mother if there was ever a day when i needed to feel like maybe this child had some love for me that was a sweet message that i took that day sometimes we get the message in the lyrics of a song or in a line in a movie we could be prompted to look up a book or a magazine, or it could be even for those who read the scriptures, it could be a scripture for the right answer. I hope that some of these have made you at least a little bit curious. If there's an animal that passes, if there's a certain bird, if there's a creature, if there's an insect, if there's a message, is a certain sign that you see, I hope you'll stop and pay attention. As my friend was trying to decide whether she was going to go back east to live or stay in the west. She was driving along the freeway in contemplation when all of a sudden a car cut her off in the middle of the freeway. And she had to break to be able to make room for that car. And look what was on the driver's license plate. If you could see that she had the presence of mind to snap that picture. There are nudges and messages and orchestrations on our behalf and we are not alone the universe angels are sending us messages all around us so i invite you to think of some of the ways i have shared that i have experienced these messages and think about your own life what have you noticed what does the universe want to tell you how can you pay a little more attention to see what are those personalized things that are not only serendipitous, they're not by chance, and it's a message just for your eyes and your ears. Okay, that's your invitation to go out there and be curious this week. And as always, remember, we're all creators. So let's go create something incredible this week. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Take care.